Greetings, good people, wherever you are. This is Ondego Chiang. And thank you very much for getting the opportunity to listen to this message. Uh, putting away uh, every bit of worry and humbling yourself to listen to this message will really help you today. This is a very, very important message for you. So please take your time, take your precious time to listen to this message. Uh, what I'm going to share with you is uh, weapons of uh, the devil's deception. Weapons of the devil's deception. In um, the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9, we are told that um, the devil has led the whole world uh, astray. He has deceived the whole world. So this one uh, is not just a portion. Could this include you and me? Uh, could this include Christians? Uh, there are some Christians who think that they cannot be deceived. In fact, pe some people think that they cannot be deceived by the devil. Uh, yet some of Jesus' final words to, the, uh, to his disciples were definitely uh, intended to warn us that we can be deceived if we are not extremely careful. In Matthew chapter number 24, I think verses uh, 4, it says, Watch out, watch out that no one deceives you. This one was one of the uh, events that he listed, the first event that he listed, uh, events that shows the end of the days. So Jesus was addressing his disciples both uh, back then and today. Obviously, Christians can be deceived. Otherwise, um, he would not have uh, wasted his breath warning us to beware. It is significant also that the warning against deception was the first thing he mentioned. Let us take a close look at, um, uh, at all the most effective weapons of the deception. How is Satan able to hold us in bondage? How? Now, deception, we find that deception accompanies a fall. It is because of the increase of subtle deception by Satan at the end that many fall from darkness. They fall, they fall to darkness. They leave the first love and uh, in fact plummet into the abyss of uh, darkness which is reserved uh, for Satan himself. So we are told in verse 12 of that Matthew chapter number 24 that um, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Yeah. Now, who is the most? Who is the most being referred to here? Jesus is not describing the world in general. He is dis addressing his disciples. He was addressing his disciples and the disciples now. Furthermore, the Greek word translated love here is agape, which is referring to the love of God, which is shed abroad in our, our hearts by the Holy Spirit. If you read uh, Romans chapter 5 and verses um, 5, that the love of God is shed in us through the Holy Spirit. Now it is uh, God's love which Christians receive when they become converted. When you are converted, you receive God's love. That's why we say God is love. So we see that uh, uh, Jesus is not talking to the world in general. He's not referring to the whole world in general. He's warning Christians to be aware. They should be aware what can happen to them. Uh, we are for one that the love of most Christians will grow wax. It will grow cold. It will be. It will wax. By the way, King James version uses the word wax cold. The increase of cataclysmic uh, events predicted by Jesus will cause many Christians, if they are uh, not firmly rooted in Christ, to be shaken. They will be shaken. He warned in Matthew chapter number 24 and verse 10 that um, 
at that time, many will turn away from the, uh, the faith and will betray and hate each other. So we find that um, we find that uh, the mark of a true Christian, a real Christian, is not necessarily the knowing of the truth. It is not just knowing a lot concerning the doctrine in your head. Although we find that uh, the biblical understanding is very, very necessary, very ne necessary to an extent. In Christian life, you should know something. You should have understanding, a clear knowledge. A wis and I mean wisdom and understanding. But principally, we find that uh, faith in Jesus enables us to have a personal relationship with him. It is a faith which is inseparable from his love. So the deception which Jesus is warning against in Matthew chapter number 24 verse 4 is a deception which causes the love of God in us to be quenched. To be quenched. Paul warned the Thessalonians, the, the, the people of Thessalonians, uh, also not to quench the Holy Spirit if you read the first Thessalonians 5 verse 19. The New International Version renders this verse appropriately. It says, do not put out the Spirit's fire. I love that uh, translation on that part. The fire of the Holy Spirit is one which is primarily expressed in uh, feelings and attitudes towards others. This is the area in which Satan mostly uh, wants to deceive us. In fact, many Christians think that um, the deception of Satan centers primarily on doctrine uh, or on uh, intellectual arguments. It is not so. These are uh, of lesser importance to God. God is mostly interested in what is in our heart, not what is in our heads here. Consider for a minute and anyway, any, any, any analyze, uh, analyze what is God's ultimate objective in our lives. Is it for us not to become like him in nature? Is it not for us to become uh, like him? To develop his love? Because God is love, as we have been told in John chapter 4 and verse 22 to 24. That we grow in his character image. You see? And is that not in the area in which Satan would most likely to deceive us? Indeed it is. The devil hates God's nature. He hates love. He would like to thwart our development of it. Any and every time he's trying by all means. He tries to do so by making intellectual arguments uh, seem more important to us than the that is the, the, the love that is in us. You see, he's trying to meander around the intellectual arguments rather than the manifestation of God's love in us. You see, he will use doctrinal differences uh, to erect barriers between, the, uh, between Christians to cause them to judge one another, to resent one another, to become bitter against each other, to sidetrack believers from the central issue of life. He uses knowledge, biblical knowledge, imagine, the scriptures, and understanding to divide and conquer. So that is a, a weapon. Remember, we are discussing the weapons of the devil's deception. So, he will center around what you call the intellectual capability. He convinced Christians, I mean those who allow him to, do the, to convince him, that their understanding is more important than showing the love of God in their lives. When they find other Christians who do not know or who do not hold to their doctrines, to all the biblical views, 
the devil will seduce one to uh, i mean one faction to oppose another to reject eh to reject them as brothers and sisters in Christ and even cause them to hate those whom they should love the devil has then uh, he has then got themselves uh, he has got people deceived they are under satan's influence and they didn't know at all people don't know now hatred is uh, is is not always open and obvious some christians resent those of other christian persuasions and uh, want to have no contact with them because they choose to have no contact their hatred is not shown outwardly they avoid showing love yet their sins of omission are as potent as sins of commission they may not think they have uh, outwardly shown hatred but their lack of positive response believes it in fact you just see them in the lack of the positive response which barely is what is in their hearts it shows it's really dif no different in uh, either we walk in the love of god or or we don't the fact that a person does not consciously uh, hate another is not uh, evidence that is walking in the love of god towards him however his lack of response and absence of good uh, feelings toward others ought to make him think twice about what is in his heart lack of love shown twice about what is in the heart you see there is what we call uh, lack of this love in our heart it is mostly shown in neutrality uh, or isolation can it it can be tantamount it can be tantamount to hatred the decept, uh, this deceptive human mind doesn't always discern the evil or 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 or, or we call it evil of hatred within our heart so you find that uh, the deception it, it, it's very subtle it's not easy to identify ironically those who resent their christian brothers may even have certain doctrinal uh, understanding correct they have it correctly but they fall into the trap of hating a brother for the sake of knowledge they hold they simply hate a brother for the sake of what they know for the sake of the knowledge they they, they hold dear instead of loving christ by loving those in whom christ's spirit dwells in, fa in fact in matthew 25 verse 40 speaks of if you love the least of these brethren then you love me as i paraphrase it they make an idol out of the very knowledge that was supposed to set them free satan's satan's deception can be very subtle brothers and sisters don't forget that satan knows all the truth he knows all true doctrine he knows all scripture it is just that he chooses not to obey it he will not humble himself he will not love god nor god's created progeny it may seem strange that in john's uh, first letter after five chapters of exhortation to christians to love one another uh, john ex ends with one short verse short and simile simile in congress statement i think in in the first letters of john chapter 5 verse 21 it says uh, uh, dear children keep yourself from idols why the statement would appear to be uh, totally out of context as you read the whole uh, the, the the whole verse the whole chapter i mean but it is not it is not out of the context it is not a digression it is extremely art god inspired it because when anything else in life is uh, has become more important to us than expressing the love of god we commit idolatry 
we have left our first love as in uh, as we have been told in revelation chapter 2 verse 4 we have missed the mark we have become sidetracked and uh, we are sub- sidetracked by satan himself we have become deceived by satan so how are you we being deceived into hatred there's nothing more important than than god's love because uh, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, uh, verses 1 to 2, and I read it, it says, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clang, clanging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy, I can perform all the mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. So I wonder how many uh, Christians uh, daily forget this text, this First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 2. How many have been deceived by the subtle serpent to forget or uh, to overlook the fact that the expression of God's love in us is a superlative. It is of a superlative importance. Jesus commands Jesus command was very simple in fact love one another if you read from uh, I mean uh, John chapter 15 verse 17 and in John chapter 13 I want to read it from verse 34 and uh, I mean 34 and 35 he says a new commandment I give you love one another as I have loved you so you must love one another all men will know what you are eh all men will know that you are my disciples. So you will be known that you are a disciple of Christ through love. How? If we have correct doctrine, is it true correct doctrine? No. There is something of a great importance to, uh, of, uh, to God than uh, biblical doctrine. Just correct biblical doctrine, there's more, something more important to it. That's loving one another, as we have been told in John chapter 13, verse 35. So, uh, if we read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4, all the way to 6, it says, Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil. So you see, love does not delight in evil. So here we find that um, uh, when brother delivers up brother to, to death and friends and family betray one another, Something other than God's love has taken its place. So Satan has got a foothold in that person's life. So uh, he has managed to bind the person in a, a, a disastrous, disastrous deception. So Jesus predicted that uh, it would occur that way. And uh, we're going to read um, the, I mean, the book of John, chapter 15, verse 20, it says, If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. You see? So, again, in John, chapter 16, verse 2, it says, They will put you, that is the true disciples, out of the synagogue, that is organized system or a place of worship. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think is offering a service to God. Yeah. That time has come. Don't think it is uh, some many, many times, uh, many, many uh, days coming. It is now. You see? Killing one another, killing one uh, or another person made in God's image and thinking such is God's will. Such will be the depth of deception and which, uh, uh, which, uh, with which Satan will be able to bind some religious... Uh, people hatred will be in fact will first be 
stirred in the hearts of these people. The act of murder will fall. You know hatred, what follows is murder. So where, 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 where does it begin? Let's see. Uh, descending to these depths does not occur overnight. It's the culmination of a process, in fact. Often one that has developed over many, many years. And uh, uh, steadily, but inexorably, the satanic rot sets and the cancer will spread. And if you read the book of, uh, I mean, John chapter 15, verse 21, it says, they will treat you this way because of my name for they do not know the one who sent me yeah so knowing this jesus personally involves uh walking in his love so anyone who hates his brother hates god uh, we have been told in first letters of john verse chapter 4 verse 20 first letters of john 4 20 anyone for anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God, whom he has not seen. So you cannot love God whom you have not seen when you hate your brother. Yeah. So quenching or killing God's love in us may start very small with little compromises uh, 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 which deny God's word. Obedience in little things is very important. In fact, God wants you to obey just very little things in the uh, because little things grow bigger given time. We are told in Luke chapter 16 verse 10 that he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. So Jesus was selected to be the disciple uh, of Jesus Christ. I mean Judas was this uh, Selected to be the disciple of Jesus Christ, Judas, you know, the Iscariot. He was offered leadership position uh, of repute. But um, because of weakness which he had failed to overcome, he forfeited his future. He forfeited his potential future. He, he coveted what we call wealth. He stole from the common past. It's uncontrolled greed and uh, character. You see? He had the uncontrolled greed and avarice which led uh, to the, what we call the complete warping of his uh, character. His character was really destroyed by this greed. Coveting small amounts of money to begin with left him to up uh, Satan's um, deceptions, which is the, in the end culminated into in his selling his master, that is Jesus Christ, for 30 pieces of silver. He valued money more than the life of the Savior, that is the life of Jesus Christ. Any sin left unattended in your life will have catastrophic end results. So if you do not fight if you do not fight this sin and attempt to overcome it, if you tolerate it, so if you not tolerate sin, if you tolerate it, accommodate it, and make excuses of it, you will eventually end up um, defeated and destroyed like uh, Judas Iscariot. So Judas sin started um, with lust for money. It ended with hatred. His love waxed cold. So here we find that, by the way, one sin leads or breeds to another. Uh, Jesus pointed out uh, equally serious character traits in others, uh, which, uh, although of a different nature, led to the quenching of God's um, love and the entry of Satan's or the satanic deception. Uh, in um, the book of John, chapter 15, verse 24, I want to read, If I had not done among them 
that uh, what no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen these miracles and yet they have hated both me and my father. So, you see? So, jealousy and consequent uh, resentment caused uh, some to succumb to uh, Satan. When they saw the miracles of Jesus, the way Jesus was doing the miracles. Jesus performed many miracles. The scribes and Pharisees uh, were chief in this category. They were lacking God's love and, uh, and their resentment of Jesus invading their religious territory and stealing away their following caused them to uh, seethe with envy. They thought Jesus was looking for a big following, just like many church leaders nowadays think. Yeah. Their self-centeredness and self-motivation allowed the wicked ones' seeds of resentment to germinate in their minds. They did not... Uh, they did nothing to counter these evil plans. Then, uh, Satan is very tenacious, my friends. Some may wonder with uh, incredulity uh, how the religious leaders could fail prey to such an approach. They do. It seems totally senseless to criticize uh, a person for performing wonder wonderful miracles. Jesus was not seeking a following. He was... Uh, merely delivering people from suffering, sickness, and demonic bondage. Why did Pharisees, on the other hand, uh, uh, I mean, uh, on the whole, hated him? Yeah. The root cause in this case was lack of humility. There was no humility. These people were proud. The religious uh, leaders refused to humble themselves. They refused to humble themselves before God and man. They wanted to be thought of as very important. They wanted others to look up to them. They sought preeminence or elevation. Jesus warned them. In fact, let's see. Mark chapter 12, verse 38. Watch out of, uh, for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted in this in the marketplaces and having the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. You see? Had they been willing to humble themselves uh, um, as few did, like in, we've read in John chapter 3, they would not have been open to the devil's deception or destructive devices. Most, um, however, did, did nothing to counter the, uh, the, this, the, the venom. Yeah. There was dem, de, demo, de, the venom growing. That was growing daily in their hearts. It grew steadily. And uh, until they were so influenced by Satan that they plotted to do it. To kill our Savior, Jesus Christ. Their sin began with lust for prestige, for power. It ended with hatred and murder. Their love waxed cold. There's also another one. The sin of unbelief. Now we are warned in the New Testament, and I will read it in first letters of John chapter 2 verse 16. Do not love the world. When you started from verse 15. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes and the boasting of what he has and, and does, comes not from the Father, but from the world. So even if you are a true Christian and you have this, you love the world, love of the world does not come from the Father. And it, it, are, the love of the world has been listed there. The cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has done. Most even most true Christians who have done something, they have helped, they have done what they, they boast. That's the love of the world. And you know the God uh, or present major influence in this world is none other than Satan. In fact, Satan is doing mo uh, the most in this present evil world is the destroyer 
who bind it, 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 it does what we call blinding it makes us it makes people blind it blinds the, the, the minds of unbelief in fact unbelievers if you read the first Corinthians um, second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 verse 4 the religious leaders of the day fell prey to Satan's deceptiveness because they wanted to uh, the praise of men more than the praise of God. They wanted to be honored by men. You see? They couldn't see God. So it was less of a reality to them than the people they saw. You see? These people, God was not real to them. What was real to them are the people they see they saw because they wanted honor they wanted preeminence they wanted to be worshipped they wanted lordship you see so here we are told that uh, god wants us to to be to we we should trust in him believe we should have full trust you see So we are told that these people they didn't they, they wouldn't have they would have seen God with their minds. They should have been seeing God in their minds. And that that, that that belief would have prevented them falling a victim to the devil if they could have believed God. As it was, they were bound in unbelief, one of Satan's uh, most powerful weapons. In fact, one of the most powerful weapons of the devil is unbelief. Unbelief is a major sin which will lead to uh, to other sins. You see? Like any unchecked sin, it can grow and prevent spiritual fruit developing in us. Unbelief accompanies every sin. Judas suffered from uh, unbelief. Jesus admitted to his disciple. In John chapter 6, verse 64, there are some of you who do not believe. He said that. Jesus had known from the beginning who, had, uh, who did not believe and who would betray him. In fact, in, John, in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, he says, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. So belief is, is that serious. Very serious. Our lives depend on it. We walk by faith, not by sight. In fact, the book of Second Corinthians 5 verse 7 states it clearly. Those who do not believe do not please God. In Hebrews 11 6, it is there. Jude reminds us in his letter that um, Israel was destroyed primarily due to the lack of faith in Jude 5. That lack of belief led to many other sins uh, of rebellion in their character for which that generation had to be destroyed. In fact, that generation was destroyed because of that. For this reason, Jude encourages us to build ourselves in the most holy faith, most holy faith that God gave us in verse 20. You remember, Jude is just... One, one chapter that will keep us in God's love. In fact, if you read verse 21, faith and love are inseparable partners. Go and read Galatians 5 verse 6. We must stir up um, the gifts of God to keep the flames of love and faith burning in our hearts. The condemnation against the generation who rejected Christ to unbelief was very severe. Equally severe condemnation will be spoken against any disciples who step back from believing in him. It has happened before. In You go read uh, John 6 verse 60 and verse 66, the same John 6. It will happen again. And Jesus exhorted his disciples in um, the book of John chapter 14 verse 11. I'm reading, believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. 
Uh, so the miracles Jesus performed in the name of uh, of his father testified to the power of the of God working within him. So there are those today who will allow the devil to deceive them into thinking that miracles of this uh, of healing and demon deliverance performed in Jesus name are not necessarily performed uh, through the power of God. In fact, some people think that the, the miracles are not there. Yeah. They chose not to believe God's word on the matter because they do not want to accept the ones they see performing, performing the miracles. So they would prefer to see their own religious uh, heroes doing the miraculous works or sit in spiritual limbo doing little of no value for Jesus. The devil can handy it can the devil can would wink somebody it would wink people into thinking that he has that godly power which he does not have. You see, and believe will exclude God from our minds and allow the devil to enter our heart. Are you opening your heart? Are you opening the door of your mind to to certain through? The unbelief. Another thing here is a arrogant exclusivism. Arrogant exclusivism. It is strange how many religious people will adhere religiously to their particular creed established by their own devising based only on one part of uh, what the Bible says. They will uh, defend they will defend it religiously true against opposition regardless of whether their views are right or wrong not not long ago i can remember uh two jehovah witnesses um, called to our home and uh, they wanted to discuss the bible we didn't uh, have uh, we didn't uh, invite them by the way they were just going from house to house you know Jehovah Witnesses. So they just stand up on the doorsteps. Uh, yeah, just like the way they are smart, they dress smartly. Uh, they seemed nice enough. Uh, they were nice people, sincere and even well-meaning. And um, many did not, the denominational people do seem that like that uh, but what god sees inside may be very different very far different from uh, what you can see uh from the outside so before in that inviting them in i asked them a simple question just one question i wanted to test something i asked them if they believe the the bible and they said they believe it they assured me they did however after some uh, discussion it appeared they did not believe all the bible said yeah it came out that they did not believe in jesus healing today yeah they claimed miracles of healing ceased in the first century <clears throat> and that all miracles today are of the devil and not in uh, are not of god and therefore we should not be aware of of those who heal today in jesus name so they refute it they refute that there's no healing today they had not witnessed miracles of healing and had not, uh, uh, they had no desire to such healings. Those Christians who have faith to receive healing are not Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> so Jehovah Witnesses' uh, backward logic is uh, uh, reasons that those who heal could not be of God's people. They could not be uh, of God because the healing are not done by Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> so this parias inductive uh, uh, reasoning is based on um, an exclusivist philosophy and a very poor understanding of how uh, God is working today. There are um, many other cults who, uh, whose reasoning is similarly flawed by narrow-mindedness and um, that's narrow-mindedness and uh, uh, similarly we have what we call arrogance also. So you see, if you don't believe that God is healing, then it seems there is some 
you don't believe the whole Bible. Because healing, miracle, God is a God of miracle. So it is a common ploy of the devil. It's a common ploy of the devil to deceive those who have a fair amount of biblical knowledge because uh, uh, knowledge easily puffs up and uh, allows the devil in. Knowledge puffs up and allows the devil in. Uh, I pointed out to the Jehovah Witness uh, the verses in Mark chapter 16 which uh, clearly state that uh, miraculous powers would be available to those who believe. In fact, let me read it in verse 16 verse 18 of Mark. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So, you see? So, I also read uh, the words of Jesus in John chapter 14 verse 12. John chapter 14 verse 12. Let's see. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these. Because I am going to the Father. So the things which Jesus was referring to um, were the miracles he performed. So that mir those miracles that he performed, we would do more than he did. So they were not open-minded. These Jehovah Witnesses, they were not willing to believe the Bible in this, on this matter. So uh, they were only willing to believe that they had already come all the things that they were already been indoctrinated to believe. They did not want to go any further apart from their indoctrinated uh, knowledge. So I, I wanted to, because they were still there, I wanted to show them the video which shows healings, evidence of divine healing, testimonies of people who had received it and who are children of God and uh, uh, living each day with the love of God in their hearts. So their reaction was of such a panic that I was... Um, Astonished. I was very much astonished. They threatened to leave immediately and uh, if we dared to do such a thing. So they did not want to look at that. The conversation did not um, last much longer after that. I offered a second time in a, sec in a different way to see whether they would be willing to reconsider their uh, decidedly uh, this defensive stance and view. Uh, objectively, some of the evidence which shows that the words of Mark chapter 16 verse 18 are just and true today as they were uh, when Mark recorded them. So they were adamant. They were not uh, going to uh, be persuaded, you know, because they were indoctrinated. So their fear of seeing anything that might challenge their cherished um, ideas was very marked. So they feared opening their minds up to the concepts. Their fear held them back from going any further in biblical truth. So that's fear. Satan had got them bound through that fear. So such fear is not of God. And it is a powerful weapon of the devil. So we have another one called denominational fears. Very much disturbing to most churches of God. Denominational thinking will keep uh, many from learning to walk fully. Uh, in the love of God. It will often limit the spiritual experience and the understanding of its members by the values established in those denominations. To the extent uh, the leaders of such denominations are led by the Spirit of God uh, is the extent of the spiritual potential which may be reached by people within those churches. So we find that uh, the leaders of denomination may often unknowingly establish the limits of the members' spirituality. They put some uh, some of the traps to fence their members. You see, it is for this reason that all of uh, all Christians uh, need to examine whom they are following. Are you really following Jesus Christ? You are Lord and Savior and your Master, or you are, or are you without realizing it, following the leaders of your denomination? Too many unsuspecting Christians uh, cannot see how they can be bound inside a church, uh, which they think uh, is bringing them liberty. They can think they are in liberty, yet they are in bondage. 
authoritarian systems of administration uh, can add to the evil. People ought to be uh, obeying God rather than men. End up obeying men rather than God. And we have been told not to do that in Acts chapter number 5 verse 29. In such circumstances, uh, uh, fear of God becomes subtly substituted by fear of men. So you fear your leader, church leader, more than Jesus Christ himself. So you are not in liberty to learn. True love can be easily uh, be quenched in such a situation where men usurp the authority of the Messiah. Um, for example, in 1 John 4, 8, it says, 18, says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. There is no fear in love. You see? But perfect love drives out fear. You see that? In, in far too many denominations, satanic uh, fear um, has driven out true love. In authoritarian, uh, ecclesiastical organizations, the fear of those in control um, predominates these organizations. M members' thinking becomes controlled without them realizing it and uh, by those in power. Those who step out of line will current with um, current theology in such autocratic churches are generally disciplined in some way, often disfellowshipped or excommunicated. The effect is the same uh, in whatever the uh, method they are using. In fact, effect is the same. Fear in the minds of the membership Fear to veer away from the patterns of behavior or um, belief established by the leadership of that particular group or organization. Fear of what others would think if um, one were to openly discuss different theology or ideas from those generally expressed in the church. Fear to disobey men rather than uh, uh, fear to disobey God. So, it is the fear of God which is the beginning of wisdom as we have been told in uh, the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. The fear of man brings a snare in uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 29 verse 25. That snare is the snare of the devil. Satan's snare is to get you to worship anything other than God. Maybe your church leader. Yeah. If Satan calls you to deny God, he has caused you to worship him instead. He wants you to be to worship him because uh, worship centers around obedience. So if you look at Romans 6, 16, to whoever you, um, you obey, you see, you are a slave to the whoever you obey, you see. Denominational thinking is a trap which spiritually limits those, who, uh, those held by it. It promotes segregation between Christians and encourages what we call division or Sikhism. In the extreme, it can lead to factional rivalry, hostility, and then hatred. It is not of God. It is a weapon of the devil's deception. Another thing is the Laodicean syndrome. The Laodicean syndrome. Denominational loyalties uh, can lead to the Laodicean syndrome from which there is a no escape except via destruction. If you read uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 16 and verse 19, they are neither cold nor, nor hot. They are lukewarm. Some denomination may be tolerant of different theological ideas, but those are not. Most lay down a code of ethics or code of beliefs. Members are, are expected to adhere to those. Spiritual learning and development are therefore uh, quenched and held in check within the limits set by the board which uh, controls the organization. This is the antithesis of uh, Jesus' uh, teaching. So you don't allow the Holy Spirit to, be, uh, to, to lead you. Uh, so Jesus said we are to become like uh, little children, willing to learn any new things he reveals. If no divine revelation do not come through the controlling board, which uh, most times they do not, 
those members are not free to promote their newfound uh, understanding unless they are accepted by the leadership. Those who are moved to grow beyond the limits established by the leadership of the group feel they must live in order to fully express their, uh, I mean, their, to, to fully express themselves, you see. Some are uh, jettisoned because uh, such new truth or expression can be to, uh, cannot be tolerated in those uh, uh, organized uh, uh, group. It is it, it usually exposes the spiritual flaws or the weaknesses of those who are uh, who lead the denomination. So they are jettisoned. They are disfellowshipped. Thus, the overall effect of man's control is a uh, uh, is separation and splintering. So that's why there are a lot of splintering of the true churches. The true church of God is splintering from splinter group every now and then because of that. There should be no controls on beliefs and doctrine in an ex ecclesiastical structure. Those who come to believe differently will separate themselves. As the Holy Spirit lead each other, uh, read John chapter 2 verse 27 and uh, also John 16 verse 13, that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, will reveal all things, even the things to come. You see? Each will respond according to his spiritual maturity. So we should respond to the spiritual maturity. We should allow the Spirit of God to work in us. At present, in human dominated uh, denominations, men try to control and effectively quench uh, the lead of the Holy Spirit. And those who respond positively can even find themselves expelled from the main group of believers by one means or another. So those who remain fall... Um, into the category of Laodicea, who does not uh, feel or see the need to grow further. Uh, the Bible says in uh, Roman, I mean Revelation chapter 3 verse 17, I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. So wealth here means doctrine. You are full of doctrines, you are full of everything in your head there, spirituality. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, Blind and naked, you see. God laments their miserable uh, spiritual state. He says that uh, uh, He says their own fate is to be spewed uh, out of His mouth uh, to wake them up. In Revelation chapter three verse sixteen, Satan has got them bound in mediocrity. So I have seen countless of Christians, uh, countless numbers of Christians, shut their minds to the new truth and rejects God's lead in. Uh, their lives for the sake of organizational loyalties. They want to be so loyal. They prefer to be loyal to those who are uh, who lead their de denomination rather than to be loyal and uh, pleasing to the Savior who brought, in fact, who bought them and uh, who continually wants to lead them on into new vistas uh, through His Holy Spirit. <clears throat> they don't realize that they are deceived. Nor that the devil has captured their minds through the, uh, the subtlety. He has, got, uh, he has got them to quench the, the floor of the Holy Spirit. God's living water in them. It is no coincidence that Jesus likened uh, people to the, I mean to trees in Matthew chapter 12 verse 33. Trees can die or, um, uh, of drought. They can pass like people. If that need, uh, needed water is not supplied, they wither and die. However, they won't necessarily um, die in the year when the drought occurs, but we live on on, uh, on in. They will just try to live on, uh, on in various states of poor health um, until um, entropy finally overtakes them. So you see, the same can occur to Christians. Cut off from the spirit because of... Uh, if you are cut off from the uh, from the, the, the life-giving water, that I mean the, the life-giving water of the Holy Spirit because of organizational, organizational idolatry, they slowly wither and then they die. You find that the first love goes. It, it just goes. They fail to see that their reserves have gone. You see, the oil in their jars, according to Matthew chapter number 25, nor do they see themselves dying. 
Now, how can we do, uh, how can we counter the inroads of the devil? Uh, when Jesus talked to the woman by the well in, Samar in Samaria, uh, he offered her uh, the living water. He said in John 4, verse 14, Drink this water and you will never thirst. This is the water of life we all need. How can we have it? How can we have this water? We have been told to repent and be baptized in Acts chapter number 2, verse 38. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And in Revelation 3, verse 19, it tells us, So be honest and repent. Let us not quench the life-giving water. The life-giving waters of the Spirit that flows through expression of God's love. Let us walk in love as He is love. Uh, let's read um, 1 John 4, 7-8. It says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. So if we love each other, according to verse 12 and 13 of the same uh, John, 1 John chapter 4, in verse 12, if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him, and he is in, uh, he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. So we cannot live in God's uh, uh, love if we have been mastered by, by Satan. So we have to live in God's love. That is what we uh, is shown. In fact, um, uh, we have to know that without God's love, we cannot please God. Without faith, we cannot please God. So if we read uh, the book of Second Peter, I want to read the book of Second Peter, chapter 2 verse 19, it says, A man is a slave to whatever has mastered him. Yeah, a man is slave to whatever has mastered him. So here we say that we deceive ourselves if we think we have uh, God's love but are content uh, to be trapped by any of the above difficulties. That is the avarice, the pride, the jealousy, unbelief, arrogance, denominationalism, uh, or fear. When we set our wills to fight the, uh, these chains that binds us, Jesus will automatically come in us. He will come. He will dine with us. Only then can we truly uh, begin to live in his love. There is a step-by-step step, uh, course we can adopt to fight uh, what we call spiritual bondage. And Peter has said it. And I think um, I want to read it in first, in second Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. Uh, it says, Make every thought to add to your faith, goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self uh, self control and to self control perseverance and uh, to perseverance godliness and to godliness brotherly kindly uh, kindness and to brotherly kindness we have love for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure they will keep you from being ineffective and uh, un unproductive in your knowledge of our lord jesus christ but if anyone does not have them, he is uh, near-sighted and blind, and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. But in verse uh, 10, if you jump to verse 10, it says, If you do these things, you will never fall. Yeah, so love is active, not passive. Love is uh, active. To counter the weapons of the devil, you must actively wield the weapons which God provides uh, for your liberation. Uh, in fact, in uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 12 and 13 says, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts, that is, evil desires, and do not pass, uh, present your members as weapons of unrighteousness to sin. But present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as weapons of righteousness to, uh, to God. So, uh, 
that is it, brethren. So we have First Peter chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, which says, Finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic. Love as brothers. Be compassionate and humble. Whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful uh, speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. Yeah, so uh, Jude also says something in uh, Jude chapter, uh, I mean Jude 24 and 25 says, To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with uh, great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. So, uh, brothers and sisters, um, wherever you are, I think this is a blessing unto you to know that um, weapons of the devil's deception, that's what we were talking about. And um, I want to say that may God's love endure in you forever. Thank you very much for listening.